Hey guys, Entity here for Deuces Cracked. Today we're going to introduce two important approaches to poker, balanced play and exploitative play. Both of these terms are used to describe the approach someone takes to how they play a hand in poker. Exploitative play is the easiest style to understand. You're playing exploitatively when you use flaws in your opponent's strategies to form a counter strategy to play against them. Let's use a simple game of rock, paper, scissors as an example. You're playing against a friend who, for some reason, always throws rock first. On his second throw, he always throws paper. What's the strategy to beat him? Simple. Throw paper first, then throw scissors. This is a simple but very effective exploitative strategy. Exploiting a player requires two main things. First, you need to know that they are exploitable, and you also need to know the specific way that they are exploitable. Keep this in mind in the future. If you know that someone's exploitable, it's not enough. You also need to know how they are exploitable. In poker, our goal is usually to use exploitative strategies to maximize our profit. So why should we learn about balanced play? Even though our goal is to use exploitative strategies as often as possible, it's necessary for us to understand balanced play in order to become an excellent poker player. Understanding balance helps us spot flaws in our opponent's game and gives us a baseline approach to poker when we're in uncertain situations. In order to play against other good players, you'll need to understand how to play in a balanced fashion. So what is balanced play? It's also known as game-theoretically optimal play, and it's defined as when you play your hand in such a way that your opponent can't develop a strategy that exploits your play. Using our previous example, let's say that you're still playing rock, paper, scissors against your friend. This time, he's caught on to your exploitative counter strategy. He wants to throw rock, but he knows that you know that he will throw rock, so he thinks about throwing paper. Your counter strategy to throw paper won't work anymore since he's no longer going to throw rock. But he knows this, and you know that he knows this, and, well, you can see how this becomes confusing and goes on and on until you realize that you have no idea what he's going to do. So how should you play? In rock, paper, scissors, there's a simple and unexploitable strategy. Throw rock, paper, and scissors each an equal amount. This strategy is unbeatable over the long run. Even if your opponent does the exact same thing, the best that he can achieve is a stalemate where he wins one-third of the time, ties one-third of the time, and loses one-third of the time. You'll note that this strategy doesn't allow us to win, it just prevents us from losing over the long run. In poker, you will occasionally see some similar situations develop when you're playing against players you expect to play very well. This is where balanced play helps you. You don't have enough information to figure out how to exploit them yet, so your best decision is to play in such a way that they can't exploit you. Again, this strategy isn't always the most profitable strategy, but is sometimes necessary to minimize losses. That wraps up our introduction to balanced and exploitative play. Next up, we'll be discussing some of the math and practical implications of GTO play in poker. If you have any questions, please ask them in the forums. This is Entity for Deuces Cracked, signing off.